So after reading 5.2.2, uh, that is Derrida and Saussure, uh, I have several doubts in my mind. Uh, like, uh, how does Derrida deconstruct the idea of arbitrariness? And, and, and when I read more, I came to the point, like, uh, uh, what is this metaphysics of presence? So, uh, in the earlier video, I have seen that you are talking something about logocentricism and phonocentricism. Right. So, in this connection, I would like to know more on those concepts as well as metaphysics of presence also. Okay. So, yeah, the idea I that uh, is very important in Ferdinand Saussure's writing is that the relationship between word and its meaning is not natural, okay. but it's a conventional one. For example, the word sister has no natural relationship with the person, human being. But it's just a convention that connects the word sister mm -hmm. with the person. Okay. So that is what he implies by arbitrariness. Uh, means any word can be used to talk about anything technically. But what connects a word with its meaning or a signal with its meaning is the convention. And convention is always social. And it is always by consensus that kind of word and meaning gets connected. Now, uh, what Derrida reads into this, and he deconstructs this idea further by saying that uh, meaning of a word is usually thought of as something in our mind, in Sashur. But Derrida points out that meaning of the word is nothing but another word. I will show you in the next unit in 5.3 what he means when I am talking about difference and uh, he, how does he uh, prove his point. That is what we will see next. But the question that you asked about metaphysics of presence is a very pertinent one and the question of logocentrism and phonocentrism. Metaphysics of presence is again a term that is taken from Heidegger and that is another you can see a connecting link between Heidegger and Derrida. What uh, Heidegger pointed out by metaphysics of presence is that when we consider being of something, like being of this table, mm -hmm. right, we often uh, connect it with its presence. We associate being of something with its presence. Okay. And uh, this bias is one of the uh, things which Heidegger is questioning, association of a being of a being with its presence. So if you look at language, then we use was, is, something is, right? So if you want to say something exists, then you say something is, okay. right? For example, this uh, table is, hmm. so that is a proof of its existence, okay. the table is. So the presence is the present tense that we often find in language. Hmm. So Heidegger is saying that we seem to connect presence and as a proof of its existence as mode of its being. And that is what he wants to question in his book called Being in Time. Okay. Now what happens in Derrida is Derrida says that uh, Western philosophy is again built on the differences, binary oppositions, mm -hmm. just like human language is built upon differences as Saussure point out. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what is P, then you should know what is T. Okay. If you want to know what is S, then you should have S is something which is not Z. Okay. Right. So we recognize elements of language by contrasting it. Mm -hmm. So Sashar says there are no positive elements in language, okay. but only negative ones. So presence of something can only be understood as absence of something else. And that bias is built into Western philosophy. So what is a woman? Woman is seen as absence of manliness. Okay. So she is considered to be secondary or inferior or derived. Mm -hmm. What is darkness? But darkness is absence of light. Exactly. Right. So there is a tendency to privilege or consider something which is present as superior. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other term in the binary is seen as inferior or derivative. Okay. Uh, for example, good versus evil as a binary opposition, mm -hmm. then evil is seen as some, something which lacks goodness. goodness yeah. And what is good? Good is something which is lacks evil. right? Mm -hmm. So this absence is uh, seen as a inferior, sign of inferiority or negativity or marginality. Mm -hmm. So that bias makes the binary oppositions uh, uh, very lopsided. Means 
in language man and woman are supposed to be equal linguistically but it's socially you see that man is privileged right so this privileging of what you think to be present is what he calls as logocentrism and logocentrism is a manifestation of metaphysics of presence because man is seen as having full presence and uh, uh, Derrida also points out why is man privileged is because he has male sexual organ balance mm -hmm. okay. so he combines phonocentrism which is uh, emphasis on speech as true expression of language mm -hmm. and he uses word called phallogocentrism okay. which is a combination of phallus that is male sexual organ which is privileged in society mm -hmm. so woman is seen as somebody who doesn't have male sexual and that's why inferior right so Derrida is actually critiquing social system mm -hmm. and the social system is uh, because of the way language is used mm -hmm. so the biases are built encoded into language and that is what he means by logocentrism and metaphysics of presence right. thank you very much sir. Thank, thank you, you.